Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to learn about trees. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I did a video on data structures and I thought, why don't we do one today? So today I wanna to talk about trees specifically We'll look conceptually at what trees are. We'll also look at binary trees, which are a specific type of tree. And we'll go through some examples in C. And hopefully we'll help make this data structure, which can be confusing to some students, not so confusing to you. Because trees really aren't that complicated. They're pretty simple. So in this video, I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of arrays and linked lists, basic linear data structures. Links to related videos in the description below in case you want to brush up before continuing to watch this video. Also, this video will include code examples. And if you don't want to just type it all in yourself, you can always get the code through Patreon. And thank you so much to all of you who support this channel. I really appreciate the support. So first of all, let's just talk about what trees look like conceptually before we get into the details and start worrying about code. So trees are data structures, just like arrays and linked lists and hash tables and queues and stacks. But unlike a lot of our linear data structures, like a linked list where we have nodes or data elements that come one after the other like this, a tree is hierarchical, so it's going to look something like this. And someone out there is going to say, hey, wait, but real trees branch upward with the roots at the bottom and the leaves at the top. And this tree seems upside down. And yeah, it it is, I guess. But typically in computer science, this is typically how we draw them with the root, that being the node where everything starts from at the top up here, and the leaf nodes down at the bottom at the end of the branches. Now, just like with linked lists, these data elements are called nodes, and the links between nodes are typically called edges. But you will also hear people call them links. But before we get any further, why would you want to do this? Well, one reason is that you might have some data that is hierarchical in nature. So like family relationships, nodes could represent a person and their children, or maybe professors and the students they taught. And of course, some students go on to teach, so they become teachers and they teach other students. And so you get this hierarchy. We can also use trees a lot in writing compilers when we want to represent a program as an abstract syntax tree. Let me know if you want to see in a future video how that works. Also file systems, where you have directories that contain directories that contain directories. And of course, each of these directories can have files in them. And so again, you get this hierarchical relationship. And I've also thought for a long time that Frank Herbert might have been a fan of trees. I can't prove it, but it seems like his characters are. Now, the point is, is that these are all examples of data that where data elements are connected and they're connected in a way that forms some form of hierarchy. So anytime you're dealing with data that is hierarchical in nature, I would recommend that you at least consider using a tree to represent it. It's not always the right answer, but it often is. Also, one of the reasons that you might want to use a tree is to access data more quickly. We have talked in the past about how slow lists are for searching, where you have to start at the beginning and basically go through each element until you find what you're looking for, or maybe you don't find it and you just wasted a whole bunch of time searching through this long list. List. And if this is too slow for what you're doing, sometimes we can speed things up by using a tree, specifically a binary search tree, which is a certain type of tree that I plan to explore in a future video. Because yeah, there are a lot of different kinds of trees out there, more than I can address in this video. So today I want to give you the overview and a basic example, and then I'm going to follow that on with future videos where we dig into some different aspects of trees and different kinds of trees. But without further ado, let's- Dad, every YouTuber says without further ado, you have to stop saying Without further ado. My apologies. Let's just get into the code. Okay, so let's just get started with this real simple program just to get us going. I have a make file here that's going to compile my code just borrowed from a previous example. Nothing too fancy there. And as I mentioned before, there are a lot of different ways we could implement a tree. I'm just going to show you one of them, a really basic example. I'm going to implement a simple binary tree. The binary in the name just means that each node can have up to two children. So let's start first by just defining our node. Okay, now if you are familiar with linked lists, hopefully you are, then this will look really familiar. We're just going to create a struct. I'm gonna call it tree node. I'm using type def so that I don't have to type struct all the time. If we were using C++, we wouldn't have to do that just in case you're wondering. And now each of our nodes, just like in a linked list, we're gonna put some data in it. Now, it doesn't really matter what we store. It could be strings, it could be floats, it could be pointers to hash tables, anything. But I'm gonna use an int for now. Just call it value. So, so each of these nodes will have a numerical value in it. And then we also, we need this branching tree structure. I told you that each of our nodes could have up to two children. And so I'm going to declare two pointers called left and right. And of course we could call these children whatever makes sense to you. I'm calling them left or right because if we draw the tree like this, 
One's going to be on the left and one's going to be on the right, but feel free to call them Abbott and Costello or Thing 1 and Thing 2 or whatever you like. And as I said before, this looks almost exactly like a linked list node, only that a linked list node will have one next pointer and a binary tree is going to have two next pointers. I mean, that's left and right, but it's basically pointing to two next nodes. And now at this point, I want to come down here in main to actually declare a few, but there's a little more initialization. And so before we do that, I just want to create a little function here that's going to create a new node for me. And I'm going to pass in a value. This is going to be the value that's going to be set in the node. Now in this function, I'm just going to make my own tree node pointer called result. This is going to be what we're going to return. This is going to be the result from this node. And I'm going to allocate on the heap a new tree node. Okay, so this is just going to allocate space on the heap. These don't need to be allocated on the heap if we don't want. I could have them be globals, I could have them be locals, whatever, but often we do put them on the heap, and so today I'm going to do that. Now, if malloc succeeded, meaning result is not null, then I'm going to come down here and set the left child to be null. That means that there is no left child yet, and the right child to null, and then let's just set the value to the value that was passed in. Okay, so this is just initializing, it's setting the value and initializing both the left and the right children to be null, so not pointing to anybody. And then we're going to return result. Okay, so this is just going to make it a little easier because I'm gonna have to do this every time I create a new node. So let's just make a function that does it and that's gonna save me a little bit of space down below. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Now down in main, let's declare a few nodes. I'm just going to be real creative and call them like n1. And we'll set its value to be 10. And then we'll do n2. Let's just make a bunch of them. We'll go n1 to n5. And we'll just number the values 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so nothing too crazy here and nothing significant about these numbers. I'm just making a bunch of nodes and they each have a different number so we can tell which node we're actually looking at. Okay, also just because it's good practice, why not? We'll just free these once we're all done. So I'm going to free n2, n3, n4, and n5. And then here in the middle is whatever we're actually going to do with our tree. Now, right now, they're not a tree. They're just a bunch of nodes that are, that are separate from each other. What I want to do is actually connect them up into a tree. So we're going to pick one as a root. I'm going to just say, let's make n1 the root. And I'm going to, so I'm going to set n1's left child to be n2 and n1's right child to be n3. Okay, so now it looks like this. And then let's leave n2's links empty, but I'm gonna set n4 and n5 to be n3's left and right children respectively. And three's right link is going to point to n5. Okay, so now we have a tree that looks like this. And let's, I just wanna verify like, okay, now we have a tree, what, what can we do with it? Now there's a lot of things we can do with it. For right now, I just wanna go through the simple example of how we traverse the tree, how we go through the tree. And in this case, I just wanna print it out. So like, if you gave me a tree, can I verify that it actually is structured the way that I wanted it to? So what I want is I wanna have some function that's like print tree, where I can pass in a root, something like this, and then it should just print it out. So let's go up and let's make a function that does that. Let's pass in a tree node, call it root. And then let's just check if root equals null. If it is, I'm just gonna print out kind of empty. And this may seem a little bit weird right off the bat, but this is gonna make more sense. This is just, I'm gonna do dashes just to say, hey, this thing, there's nothing here to see. It's an empty tree. Maybe we can just put empty here. Do that just as a way to indicate, hey, we're just we just printed an empty tree, and that way we can distinguish between that and no output, and we'll return because there's nothing left to do. The simplest case here is when I pass in a tree that has no nodes. Then after that, okay, so what if it does have nodes? What if what if I passed in a pointer that's not null? Well, then what I'm gonna do is I need to go through this tree. And one of the tricky things about trees is there's different orders that we can go through. What I'm gonna do today is called a pre-order traversal. And the reason it's called pre-order is that basically we're going to print out the data in the node first, followed by the left subtree, and then followed by the right subtree. It's pre-order because the data comes before, before, pre, anyway. So here what we're gonna do is 
just print out value equals, okay. We're gonna print out the value there. And now when it comes to printing out the left, well, let's just print out left first to let you know that we're actually going into the left subtree. And I'm gonna do the same thing with right. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find when you're working with trees is that trees lend themselves really well to recursion. The thing that I'm doing on one tree works just as well on the subtrees. And that's one thing you always wanna keep in mind when dealing with trees is you often benefit from doing things recursively. So I'm going to do this recursively today. We don't have to do it recursively, but I'm choosing to. So what I'm gonna do then is just say, let's just print the tree that is the left subtree. So we're gonna pass in print tree, the left subtree, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the right. And then just for fun, let's just say done. And that way we'll know that we're done with the tree and then we're going to return. Okay, so now we have this ability to print the tree. We come down here. Now our program at this point should work. Let's give it a try. And it compiles at least. Let's run it. Okay. Now, now this actually worked, but our output is pretty ugly because it's all flat. So it's, it's a little tricky for me to see, okay, of course, you know, we, we started with 10, we go into left, you can see we go into lefts left and it's empty. So you can see this and you could trace through it. I actually would like this to be formatted a little nicer. So let's actually go back up into our program and try to adjust things just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little indentation here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come up here and create a new function that just prints tabs. There are different ways to do this. This is just a quick way that I'm going to do it. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want to actually keep track of what level in the tree we're at. And I wanna indent the line based on the level that we're at. And you don't have to use tab characters here. You could use spaces, something like that. I'm gonna use tabs just because I can, why not? Doesn't really matter. And then now what I wanna do is when I print out the tree, I wanna actually tell it what level we're working at. And so then it can make adjustments. Okay, now how I'm gonna do this is I need to add a level here. Okay, so we're gonna pass in the level that we want, but when main calls print tree, I don't want it to have to specify a level. So I'm actually gonna change the name here and say this is the recursive version of print tree. It takes a level. And then what I'm gonna do is come down here and add print, I'm gonna basically do indentation here where I indent to the particular level that I want. I'm gonna do this pretty much everywhere throughout. Okay, so I'm gonna do this when we print out the value. I'm gonna do this when we print out left. When we print out right, I don't need to do this before the print trees because those are gonna all take care of themselves. We do need to do it before we hit done. Okay, so just space this out so you can see a little. So all I'm doing is adding indentation. So what this is doing is it's just going to print it out each time. The other thing is now, instead of print tree, I need print tree, the recursive version. And we're going to add, go up a level each time that we recursively call our function. Okay, so yeah, so that looks pretty good. And then what I'm gonna need to do, of course, now because I still wanna call print tree like this, is we're gonna come down here and make remake our print tree. And it's gonna take our tree node. And then all it's going to do is call print tree recursive with that root and a level of zero. So what this is gonna do is for the root node, it's going to use an indentation level of zero. And then when it goes to the left subtree, it's going to increment that indentation level by one. And so we should see this in our output. It should make the output a little bit easier to read. So anyway, let's go down and see if that improves things. It should. Okay, so now it looks a little bit more like a tree. You can see we have our root, which has a value of 10. On the left side, you have a value of 11 and you have two empty subtrees there on, on the left and the right of 11. Then if we look over at the roots right node, we see 12, which is exactly what we intended. And it has a left, which has a value of 13 and no subtrees. And it has a right, that has a value of 14 and no subtrees. So that is an extremely simple example for a binary tree, but I hope it gives you an idea for how trees work. I hope it gets you started on your journey into understanding how to use trees to make your software more powerful. I'm definitely planning to talk more about trees in future videos because there's a lot more to say in the tree department. Be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss those videos. Drop this one a like if it was helpful, and I will see you soon.